Perfect. <laughs> Look professional. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Ben. Hey, nice okay. to meet you. Yeah, Last time uh, I see you <laughs> in the conference. So today we are at um, Madeira mm -hmm. for uh, Atlantis, Bitcoin Atlantis. Yeah. It's a pleasure to have you. Uh, you, you are famous for your podcast called BTC Station. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us, what is it? What yeah. are you doing on it? There is so many videos, so many views. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, um, so in 2016, I started a YouTube channel called BTC Sessions. And um, the premise was every single week, I would make a video tutorial on how to use Bitcoin, how to secure Bitcoin, how to use all the different apps and tools and devices. And uh, I just kind of kept doing it. So it's we're almost at eight years doing the channel. Um, so it's been there's a there's a huge backlog of educational content. And then on top of that, I now do a news show every Thursday with Nico from Simply Bitcoin. And I also do a Friday panel show called Why Are We Bullish? Yeah. Where I just get back together with a bunch of Bitcoiners and have fun. That's also one of my questions for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, later on. Yeah. So right now, um, I, I would like to know from your point of view, because you spent so many times uh, like just trying to, to explain the solutions that are on Bitcoin, how they work, how to like simplify the, the process of just getting into Bitcoin. Yeah. So now with your experience, what you what would you recommend for like content creator like us or just people trying to bring Bitcoin into life of other? Yeah. What would be the, the first solution, the first thing that you, you will mention to them? Um so I guess on the, the content side of, of Bitcoin and and trying to make things that are relevant and helpful to people. Um I think at this point in Bitcoin's kind of trajectory, it's a good idea to hone in on um, a niche and like specialize in something like what are you going to be good at? What are you going to be known for? And so, you know, um, the, we're already kind of seeing this with some of the content where some people are very focused on lightning or some people are really focused on, um, you know, the privacy aspects of Bitcoin or security um, and even kind of the, the higher level topics of like the macroeconomic side of thing or the philosophy side of things. So, you know, figure out where you fit in there and then even maybe set yourself apart a bit more by, by really honing in on a very specific niche of people. It may seem counterintuitive right now because the Bitcoin audience is still on a global scale, relatively small, but it's going to grow and grow and grow. And so, Same thing when I started the channel, the question in my mind was, does the world really need a guy who makes tutorials on Bitcoin every week? And at the time, for a little while, the answer was no. Uh, there weren't a lot of views. There weren't a lot of subscribers. The odd person would comment and everything, which is nice. Um, but over time, it became a more important thing that people wanted. And so I think being early to something specific and specialized is, is a good tactic. Thank you. And what, what would you recommend when the, when you get to to Bitcoin subjects mm -hmm. and people are interested in it? What should you recommend as a, like a wallet of things to explore uh, to yeah. do? And so I mean the the I say I'd say the three key tenets to get started is number one, where are you going to get your Bitcoin? Number two, learning how to just do a basic hot wallet on your phone but what it you said a hot wallet oh, hot yeah wallet. yeah okay. um so where are you getting your bitcoin basic wallets on your phone and then hardware what kind of device do you want to secure your long-term savings okay. if people can get through those three things and one at a time gradually then they're already so much better off than the majority of people because a lot of people they'll If they have Bitcoin, they may just leave it on an exchange, which is not something that you really want to do. Um, and then, and then people can continue to learn from there. You don't, you don't have to out the gate be running a node or you know knowing every aspect of privacy tools or Lightning. But it's great that you can get there after a little bit of time. So, okay. And to to go back to your the the session you're doing now <laughs> called why I. Why are we bullish? Yeah. Uh, the, the subject is like you're bringing some people around mm -hmm. and you're trying to 
to explore the, the main subject of the week, of the months, of what's going on, yeah. why the price is just... Yeah. <laughs> and I've got the question for, for you now that you, you've been exploring the subject. Why are you bullish on Bitcoin right now and for the few yeah. months and years? <laughs> yeah, this, this answer changes every day depending on my mood. Okay. Um, right now... Again, in the context of being in these places and seeing what people are building, I think right now I'm, I'm bullish on Bitcoiners that are recognizing it's important to build local communities. Because at the end of the day, if you're, if you're kind of dependent on larger structures and, and top-down governance and getting permission, that's... You know, Bitcoin was started on a basis of not asking permission. It was inherently ground up. So if you take that away, then it, it kind of loses those key tenets and, and the ethos that we, we came to it for. So what I love to see is I love people collaborating and finding ways that they can use Bitcoin locally with Bitcoiners that they know and have met. And um, when you do that, you escape or, or you at least mitigate the risk of somebody from above saying you're not allowed to do that because it's very difficult to stop somebody from having friends and cohorts that they just transact with and they, you know, I'm a barber and I offer a haircut and you pay me in Bitcoin. It's really hard to stop that level as opposed to, oh, I'm buying Bitcoin from the exchange and I have to that's my only way to use Bitcoin. And if I want to use it, I have to go back to the exchange to sell it. That's easy to shut down. But you build your community and you're resilient. Okay. Uh, it seems like um, make me feel, uh, think about uh, like at the, the final stage of the socialism, communism thing and the yeah. totalitarianism. They try to, they say, yeah, it's communism. It's about community. Yeah. But it's not about like the, the small community, the 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 like the family the, yeah. the village the those yeah. things is the state yeah big thing and you you just break every uh, relationship you have with your neighborhood with your family and yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's a, the relationship is uh or the rather the community is the state tells the entire community what to do yeah. and the inverse should be true it should be a voluntary that's bitcoin is is based around voluntarily interacting with the people around you and it incentivizes people to provide value to others in order to earn Bitcoin and be able to save it if they're providing enough value for others. Okay. And in the case between there is no more like uh, social engineering of uh, taking uh, capital from one place to give it to another, you, you have to like bring value, you mean? Yeah, I mean, at, at the end of the day, um, exploitation isn't rewarded right the, in the in the legacy system the biggest institutions can ef effectively steal from its citizen citizenry and the repercussions at the end of the day when they go bust are i guess the central bank will just print us some more money and bail us out at the expense of the rest of the population but with bitcoin there is no final stop to bail them out it's they reap what they sow if they acted irrationally and they ran a poor business yes the, the customers get caught up in that but what happens is the institution rightfully goes bust the customers unfortunately are affected by that but the customers of that bank per se then begin to scrutinize where they keep their money they begin, begin to more carefully think about the risk of how they use their money and it results in a more self-sovereign and uh, a more personal responsibility for the individual, which is, I think, where we want to go instead of being babysat constantly, allowing us to be exploited. Good. Can. What was your epiphany with Bitcoin? <laughs> what was my what? Sorry. Epiphany. Oh, epiphany. Yeah, yeah. The, the English term yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, like uh, the, the moment you just realized that uh, Bitcoin was... It, was... it was a slow burn, I think. Um as with a lot of people, it was, you know, you see the, the price go up and you get interested, you start reading about it. Um, I, 
I did do a, a few months of kind of reading online about it before I ever got any Bitcoin. And so I at least understood if the news was inaccurate. Um, so, you know, a, a big exchange went bust shortly after I got my first Bitcoins. And I remember seeing the news s saying that Bitcoin had been hacked. And I knew that wasn't true. And so, I mean, that was an, a kind of an epiphany moment for me going, oh, really, nobody gets this right now. Most of the world doesn't get this. And they're reporting it as if they are. And I kind of understood that, it would, you know, diff Bitcoin would be difficult to kill, difficult to censor, um, you know, limited supply. So good store of value. I, I understood those things. And I think the, the legacy media really helps cement them because of its lack of understanding and, and, and how they reported it. So if anything, I don't know, thanks to the mainstream media for pointing out that you can sometimes be incredibly inaccurate and helping me think for myself. Mm -hmm. And you, you think with Bitcoin is different than for other subjects? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the other epiphany. If, if I know a subject and I watch a newscast reporting so inaccurately on it, but stating it as fact, all of a sudden your brain goes, what about the subjects I'm not informed yeah. on? How are they, are they actually accurate on the news with those? And it, it, it kind of changes your whole worldview because you, you really begin to question a little bit of everything. And I'm not saying that you, there's never been an accurate story on the news, but I'm saying that it's, it's, it's up in the air. Mm. Yeah, yeah, at least for a subject that important, mm. you realize how important is it to, to have a media that says something yeah. uh, valuable. At yeah, <laughs> and lots of different outlets and um, no censorship of people that have opposing views. Because, again, if, if I can see, I, I, like imagine if Bitcoin was not allowed to be reported on positively and all of us here understand, you know, how it works and what it can help with and, you know, what it can do for the world. If, if that's not allowed to be said, then the, the, the public knows nothing but lies. And so, um, yeah, I, I just think it's important that you, you, you're able to have those opposing views and present them. And I, I think it's important that you fight ideas with healthy debate rather than quieting people. Is there any like technology or something you are, that you're following right now or like a new hardware wallet, a new feature uh, coming in? Uh... So and we're at a, an interesting point in Bitcoin where um, I think over the next number of years, the average person isn't going to have their first interaction with Bitcoin be on chain as a regular Bitcoin transaction. A lot of people already are onboarding directly to Lightning and um I, I think it's interesting because we're having to teach in a different way. And before it'd be like, oh, get a, get a Bitcoin wallet, get it on chain and everything. And now it's becoming a little, a little bit different, a little bit uh, nuanced in how you teach that. And it's just a function of the fact that we're witnessing an entirely new monetary system be built layer by layer. And for the, uh, those of us that have been around at any point in the past 15 years, we are some of the few that got to exclusively live on the base layer mm -hmm. for a period of time. And now we're just starting to see a normalization of onboarding into the second layer of Lightning. But now we're also starting to see that Lightning may not itself be exactly the second layer, but a layer to connect different systems like Fediments and the Cashew and Arc perhaps, or yeah. you know, all of these different other ways of transacting on Bitcoin that have different benefits and trade-offs. Um, so I, I, I think it's just an interesting time to have a question mark in my head about what will the average person onboarding to Bitcoin look like in 10 years? Because I don't know. Yeah, that, that's a fascinating subject. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, we didn't think about it uh, enough, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the, everything is changing and you, you just... You can't bring someone just in the first layer. It's yeah. impossible right now. Yeah. Exactly. Because it will be just wrecked by the fees, by everything. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot we didn't anticipate. You just like UTXO management. Oh, yeah. if you if you add $50 to your wallet every, you know, once a week and you do that for a couple of years, you're going to move your funds later. 
it's going to be a really expensive yeah. and a lot of people didn't anticipate that coming at least not this early um and thought that we would have had more time but we see these spikes in fees and we realize like you know that could be the reality permanently tomorrow maybe you know so like yeah. we need to now start planning for those things as individual okay yeah thanks it was a great time having you on the yeah. stage <laughs> thanks for having me i really yeah. appreciate it thank you i hope we will have other exchanges